it wasn't that bad, I didn't think. But then when we go to the new spot, customers come in and they're like, this is such an upgrade from what you had before. This is amazing. And uh, they're like, wow, this is great. You know, and you know, they, why did you move? I can see why you move now. And they tell you about how, you know, how great it is. Well, you know, heck, I'll take the compliment. <laughs> it was like, I guess we were in kind of a dive before. So uh, now, if you think any of my locations are dives, please let me know. I mean, that's not what, that, what we look for over at Schrock. Uh, we're trying something new on the Facebook stream this morning, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. You can join us there on the program. You'll notice that there's not a little uh, bar right down here here. Uh, sorry, fingers are backwards on the, on the feed there. Um, but there's no bar on the bottom saying, call now, 866-496-8772. I'll try to say the number a lot to make up for it. Um, I also can't live switch. You'll hear me talk about Secure Updater, for example, and you'll see a, a tile come across the screen for Secure Updater. I won't be able to do that on the video today because I'm trying to track down the reason why about 40 minutes in every single program we do, all of a sudden, Things just on the on the live stream just they bog down. It gets super choppy. It doesn't look good. I want to find out why that's happening. And I think you know we have the Facebook stream, and we usually don't go straight into Facebook. We have a, a third party uh, software called OBS that allows me to live switch. Basically, I can switch between my computer's desktop. I can switch between you know prepared tiles. I can put overlays on the screen. Things like that. Uh, it's kind of nice. Uh, allows me to give you guys, you know, kind of a very produced look. Um, it's one less thing for me to manage this morning, so it's kind of nice, you know. I'm just kind of don't have to scramble and type and click things while I'm talking. I can actually like concentrate on what I'm saying. Oh, sad days, sad, sad days in the service centers. The uh, oh boy, uh, we had one of our finest move on to a new position, and uh, one of the things about Schrock, there are two kinds of people we have at Schrock. There are absolute all-stars that we have specifically recruited and specifically hired and trained to to serve our customers and do well but some of our best rock stars some of the most amazing technicians and people that we've ever had are people that we have grown and when i say grown you know and what i mean is people who came into us who you know they, they knew some tech i mean they, they weren't idiots you know you can't you can't have just, you know, Joe Blow come off the street and be like, oh, yeah, I'm a computer guy now. I know service, you know. You, you can't do that. But, you know, these kids that, can, that come in, it's amazing to watch them grow over time. And it's, I'm starting to sound like an old man now. And it made me feel so old this week. You know, I'm 41. So I, I, got, I got some time left here. But, oh, it made me feel so old. Um, because a guy that has been with my company for five, six years now uh, has moved on. His, uh, his Kevin. Uh, Kevin was the operations manager. He, uh, he, you would have seen him in any of the three service centers, uh, making sure that he was basically my right-hand guy. And uh, he was offered an amazing opportunity with Peter Kiewit. And one of the things about Schrock is we hire these kids, and when they're kids, they don't, know, they don't have a lot of the skills. They don't understand that there are internal customers and external customers. And you have to treat them both with the same respect because you can't, you can't treat, for example, if you have a customer who is, uh, I'm going to be very gentle about this. If you have a customer who is testing your resolve to deliver good service, you know, those people, like, those people that just never, no matter what you do, they will never be happy. They exist. But that doesn't mean we just assume that they're never going to be happy and treat them as such. No, we treat them this, we treat you know, even better sometimes than some of our other customers just because we're trying so hard to, to make these customers happy. And uh, you have to take a kid who doesn't understand that, uh, a kid who um, really doesn't, in some cases, you know, one of the things I tell people when I hire them is like, when I hire people, that you got to have empathy. If you don't have empathy, I can't train empathy. Um, you have to have that. That has to be built into your character. If you can't look at somebody's, if you can't look at someone's computer and see that this is not a piece of equipment on a bench, this is somebody's life that they put on hold temporarily so that we can correct a problem for them so we can get it back to them and they can resume life. If you don't see that, if you don't understand that at a core level, let me take your phone away, young man, for how long is that computer on the bench? Two days? I'm going to take your phone for two days. You tell me how happy you will be to give it up for two days. And uh, then the kids are like, well, phones are different. You know? And it's like, you're missing the point, son. You know? <laughs> Come on now. But you know, And over time, these lessons become internalized, and then you, you see them become automatic. And then um, it was a real lesson for me because with my people, we're always pushing to be better. We're always pushing. We're always 
fixing. We're always tweaking, trying not to make mistakes, trying to communicate better. Uh, there's so much communication that has to happen. It, literally, you can't over communicate. And so no matter how much you pour in, there's always more that you could pour in. Kevin was one of those people that started off as a sponge and just soaked it all up. And when he interviewed with Peter Kiewit, you know, we had that uncomfortable conversation and it, it was, it was, it was sad because he, he pulled me aside. He said, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's not going to make you happy. And, uh, well, I knew what was coming. You know, I thought that, that's the conversation that, uh, yeah, I knew what was coming. So I'm okay. You know, let's, let's do this dance. Okay. What's going on? And his voice quivered a little bit. And, you know, he said, you know, remember how you told me, you know, when I was hired that Schrock is an incubator, that Schrock takes people and develops skills in them so that they can go on to other companies and succeed. And that's true. I mean, we have employees who have gone on to work for Apple. We have employees that have gone on to work for AMD. Um, if you ever had a computer problem at Duncan Aviation, it's one of our former employees that, helps you there. And I'm not taking credit for their accomplishments. Don't get me wrong. Those guys earned what they have, but they earned it by learning. And we gave them an opportunity, an environment, a safe environment to fail, if you will, and then correct those failures and move on and get better and better and better. And uh, so Kevin took a job over at, at Peter Kiewit and uh, it's an amazing job. And then in the interview, one of the things they told him was that they were, according to him anyways, that they were impressed with his ability to handle technical issues as well as talk as a human being. That is one of the things at Schrock that is absolutely core to our capabilities. Now, people don't leave Schrock very often. Um, it sounds like a cult, doesn't it? You know, they don't leave. <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> <laughs> no, people don't leave often, you know, and the, when they do leave, it's usually after a few years, you know, the five years, you know, four years, three years, much longer than some of these kids stayed at the last jobs. When we hire people, we see lots of job hopping, you know, 18 months here, 24 months there to have someone come and stay at your company for five years. Um, when they leave, it's like a friend is leaving. And, you know, I don't want to say that to him because that's kind of sappy because he may not feel that way. Cause I'm just his boss, you know, he's just my boss, but uh, no, I mean, I, I, I respect that guy. And so uh, one of the things that, uh, that Kevin would do uh, is he would work an entire shift open to close in the Papillion Service Center once a week um, just because of staffing issues and things like that. He may, we make sure everybody gets at least two days a week off. We make sure that in their two days, we try to get them together if we can so that they don't have a, a situation where they have like a Monday and a Thursday off and it's like you can't even make plans or take, you can't recharge your batteries, right? Um, so he's gone, right? So I had to cover that shift. Now, we've hired two new kids, and we'll talk about those guys in a minute. But uh, I had to cover his shift. And uh, it's been a – I mean, honestly, I work in the service centers. People act so stunned when I answer the phone. Like, you're answering your own phone at Schrock Innovations? That's crazy. I'm like, it's not crazy. The phone was ringing. You know, I get on the radio and talk about great service and how we want to serve you and we want to help you. I, that, that comes from inside me. I like to help people. It recharges my battery to solve your computer problems. It really does. And so ask my wife. She's like, you need to get it. If I'm kind of, you need to get into the shop and you need to help some customers because you're grumpy. <laughs> you're doing too much paperwork and businessy stuff. You need to get in there and do the, the, the tech work, the, the people work that makes you happy. And so I got into Papillion and I'm, I walked in the door that morning. I'm, I'm going to kill this today. I got a full bench in here because Papillion was in queue. I have a full bench. Yeah, there's a couple, we call them problem children, computers that don't want to be fixed, but we're, we're going to get them on the straight and narrow. And we have the easy ones, but then there's the problem children. Um, then I'm going to knock these problem children out of here. I'm going to clean this bench off because, you know, Kyle's working here tomorrow and he's never worked a shift in Papillion before. So I, he's coming in and he doesn't know where the screwdrivers are, you know? So, I mean, he's going to have a lot to take in. I need to make sure he has a butter smooth shift. Customers called. I helped customers. I answered questions. Customers were happy when they hung up the phone. The, sh the customers dropped off computers. I chit chatted with them. I talked with them. Things were great. It was awesome. And then at the end of the day, I looked at the day that I did by the metrics that I hold my employees to. Because every business has to have metrics, right? You know, it, I enjoy helping people, but on the other hand, if you don't get compensated for what you do, the lights don't stay on and you're not there to help people, right? And I had an atrocious day from a metrics perspective. It was awful. I delivered some, I delivered some best of Omaha, best of Lincoln, Nebraska's number one computer repair company kind of service. Uh! But I didn't have a whole lot to show for it at the end of the day. 
and it gave me it gave me some empathy. It gave me some grace for some of my employees. And I get down on them once in a while. I'm like, guys, you know, this is not acceptable. You know, you can't do this, that, or the other. You have a full bench. Lincoln's in queue right now. How do you turn in a day that looks like that when you have more work than God, you know, in front of you? Do your job. Yeah. Well, you know, it was one of those things. I didn't realize how rusty I was. And how much, like, you know, I'm not a, uh, I knew where the screwdrivers were. You know, it's like when I'm coming in, I'm not some newbie looking guy, you know, that doesn't know what to do or how to do things or how to renew Schrock desk or how to renew secure updaters or set up a Schrock desk or, or, you know, when customers call me and ask me, why does my endpoint have a question mark? Yes, we're going to talk about that today. Um, I don't have to, like, ask anybody. I know the answers to those questions. So now imagine somebody who doesn't know the answers to those questions and has the same level tech skills that I do. I am not a master technician. People come into the shop, they're like, I want Thor to help me. No, you really don't. You want Kyle to help you. You want Robert to help you. Thor will help you too, and Thor will make you feel really good as he's helping you. But if he gets stuck, he's going to push. There's a little button we have. It's like one of those bank robber buttons under the desk. That It's really there. So like, if one customer comes in and you're alone at the front desk, you don't look over your shoulder and say, hey, guys, I got another lady up here. I need you to come up and help me just in case, you know, they're not paying attention. It's, it, it looks bad. So we put a button, like one of those remote doorbells under the desk, and you push the button, and in the back it goes ding dong, and it lets everybody know back there front desk needs help. Um, and then they come up and help, and it's like magic. All of a sudden people just come out of the back and they're like, how can I help you? It's great. Yeah, well, when I'm helping you at the front desk and I get stuck, I will stall so I don't look stuck, and I'll push that button. <laughs> And the guys will come out and they'll look left and they'll look right and they'll look all confused like there's nobody else up here. Um, and I'm like, hey, Kyle, hey, come over here for a second while you're out here. Can you give me a hand with this one here? I'm having some difficulty getting this to move. Can you show me how to do that? And then Kyle says, sure, Thor, and he takes over and then I fade. I slowly fade back <laughs> until I disappear into the back room. And Kyle's like, what happened there? And I'm like, I got stuck. I needed your help. So I, I can do tech, right? But those guys are the technicians. So the problem children were still the problem children after I left. Um, the, uh, the easy ones were done. Some of the easy ones were close to done. I, I left Kyle some easy kills, you know, so that he could, uh, you know, he could have a decent day too. That's what I tell myself why I didn't, you know, finish him before I left. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to miss Kevin. Uh, I'm already missing him over there at the shop. But we have, uh, this is the time to, uh, to hire new people. And so we have completed uh, hires on two new technicians. We have one that starts February 1st and another that starts February 12th. Um, they're coming from different varied backgrounds. Uh, they have some tech skills. Their customer service, one is much, much stronger in customer service than the other. Uh, one is much stronger in tech work than the other. And so the, uh, the, the thing is they both have empathy. When they were interviewed, you could tell that they both care about their customers and they both want to serve their customers. And if you have those two things together, you can train anything else. 866-496-8772. That's the number to give us a call. You can ask your questions. Uh, yeah, I will do my best. I don't have a panic button here, right? What's my panic button here? Um, so, yeah, we're going to need you to bring that into the shop. I, mean, I don't have a panic button here. Uh, so you, you, can, you can bring your tech question, and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Usually I do a pretty decent job, get you some answers, and get you on your way this morning. Um, 866-496-8772. And to incentivize you, to call. You can uh, give us a call, ask a question, make a comment. Hey, if you had Kevin help you and you, you know, Kevin, it, habits are hard to break and Kevin listens to the radio show. And, you know, I may or may not let him know I talked about him a little bit today. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like, hey, I said nice things about you. You should listen to the show. It's kind of like, yeah, then what, you say them for me or just say them for them or what? But uh, if you had an experience in our service center with Kevin uh, over the last five years, if he helped you with your computer, give us a call and tell us that story. I mean, that's a, that, that would be a fun way to send him off. Um, his new job at Peter Kiewit, he's flying back and forth to, uh, to Mexico. So once he was done, he's two weeks in the U.S., two weeks in Mexico doing tech work. Once he was done telling me and, you know, and he was, I was obvious that I accepted it and I wished him well. I was happy for him. I was sad, but I was happy for him. Um, that I was like, oh, and you know, by the way, make sure you get kidnapping insurance because, you know, and, uh, and he says, don't, and then he literally says, don't worry. They told me that as long as you stay kind of on the campus area, that there's very, very few times they're going to have you go outside the campus area. But as long as you stay on the campus area, you're perfectly safe. Wait a minute. Did you just say there are some times that they're going to send you off the campus area where you will not be perfectly safe? Kevin, no, no, son. What do I have to do? You stay, you stay here. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I thought, you know, telling him that like the day he told me would, would maybe be like a little, you know, might be misinterpreted as a nasty, like, let me talk you out of this kind of thing. But, uh, but nevertheless, the, uh, the, the folks at Schrock are ready to help you out. All right. So we're alive on Facebook, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. Welcome, lovely Kimberly. Hi, Thomas. How are you doing today? Uh, if you're joining us on Facebook, please feel free to type your comments in there as well. I will go ahead and answer them during the commercial breaks. Also, um, if you would please take a moment to share the broadcast or you know, like it, share it. Um, sharing it with your friends is one of the easiest ways for us to spread the show. Uh, it's why I spend so much time and resources trying to make sure this broadcast looks good doing different things. But if you could share the program, it means a lot to us as well. All right, 866-496-8772. Before we take our first break, um, there was an issue with Symantec this week. Uh, we posted a link on Facebook. And uh, basically what's going on is if you have a question mark on your endpoint antivirus software, you are protected. What's going on is that Semantics agent management servers are having an issue. And they put up a, uh, they got so many calls about it, they put up a status page. That status page tells you what, if they're having issues with what parts of their system. Um, so I posted a link to that status page so that you could log in and you could check to see if there was degraded performance resulting in a question mark for you. I've had it, my staff has had it, many, many customers have had it. We get the computer on the bench, we leave it turned on for 24 to 48 hours, and eventually it gets through and it connects to the management service. What does the management service do? It literally tells the management service that your computer is online and your subscription is valid. In the event that it can't connect to that, you may get a message saying your subscription is not valid. In fact, it is valid. If it can't connect, you'll get a little question mark down there. If you can't connect, it may refuse to do a, an update for you. Please be aware that you are still getting updates. If you get the question mark, if you leave your computer on for 24 to 48 hours, it will go away. But if you have a laptop and you close the lid, put it to sleep, things like that, every time you open it right now, the question mark is going to come back. Um, that's because they're having issues with just that communication part of their server. You're still getting all of your automatic updates. You're still getting all of your scans done. You're still protected. There's no need to give us a call and, and say, oh my gosh, I'm not protected. You are protected. If you want to call us and have us take a look, if you're concerned about it, we're happy to do so. But please keep in mind that we have over 16,000 endpoint subscribers, and um, they're all calling us. So <laughs> if our turnaround time is a little slow getting back to you on that, please forgive us. You know, Kevin quit. Eight, see, now we blame stuff on him. 866-496-8772. Got to take a break. When we come back, your iPhone X will only last 18 months. Yeah, that brand new phone you just got. How many months ago did you get it? One, two, you got 16, 17 left. Also, super important, because we can't say the name of the sporting event. Well, maybe we can. I'm not going to get in trouble, though. So the biggest bowl of football goodness, if you want to watch that on your computer, I'm going to tell you how to watch the giant bowl on your computer coming up next on Compute This. If you can dream it, Schrock Interactive's website developers can make it happen. Refresh your website, automate sales and marketing, and grow your business today with Schrock Interactive. Some people like desktops for their power and upgradability, but nothing rivals a laptop for computing on the go. But why should you have to sacrifice performance for portability? The innovators at Schrock want our customers to have it all, so we created a new kind of laptop, the Solid State Laptop from Schrock Innovations. Solid State laptops are built using the same frame and mainboards as regular laptops, but we've removed half of the moving parts while more than doubling the computer's speed. The result? Laptops that boot to Windows in six seconds or less, respond instantly to your commands, and can survive drops that put most laptops into the data recovery lab. Starting at only $4.99, Solid State Laptops give you speed, reliability, durability, and performance for the same price most people pay for a cheap disposable laptop. The next time you're looking for a laptop, check out the Solid State Laptops at SchrockInnovations.com or visit any of our service centers. Simple, solid, fast technology is what we do at Schrock. Compute this pro tip 843. Of all computer failures, the scariest and most expensive is the hard drive. But there are some steps you can take to save money and save your data before it's too late. 
Detecting failures early is important. So install a free utility like Drive Advisor from driveadvisor.com to monitor your hard drive's health and receive warnings when there's a problem. But most of all, hard drive failures happen slowly, so early detection is key to reducing the repair bill. Second, if your hard drive makes any unusual noises, immediately turn off your computer and do not turn it on again. These issues are physical problems, and the more you try to use it, the worse the damage becomes. Remember that most computer repair shops do not have the specialized equipment needed to recover data from a failed drive. Never open your drive or allow anyone else to do so. Open drives always cost more to recover. Shrock does not charge for data recovery evaluations and quotes, so let the local pros look at your drive before you make any recovery decisions. This pro tip brought to you by Shrock Innovations Computer Company. All righty, folks, welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, where we fix computers and we do all kinds of cool tech stuff and we help you with your technology problems. 866-496-8772 is the number to join us on the program today. On Facebook, we're live, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. Uh, Brian is asking, would the lovely Kimberly consider a guest appearance on the show? A am I not good enough for you? I is, is that what I'm hearing here? You know, we, we, this is a family program. You know, we, we, try to, we try to keep, you know, your focus on the computers and such. Are you asking my wife to come on a webcam? What, 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 what's going on? <laughs> well, I put the question to her. You can see her answer, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. All right, let's jump into those phones, 866-496-8772. Terry, welcome to the program. How can I help you on Compute This? Good morning. My wife loves your show. Well, thank you. But I thought I'd tell you that you you know, don't. I've, trained, I've trained hundreds of people and uh, kids, a lot of them, and I've watched them grow up and mature. And now after 30 years, this kid had worked uh, for me. He didn't work for me, but he worked for me 30 years ago. But he came up 30 years later and go, you know, he said, I really thank you. I said, for what? Well, seeing that spark in me that I would succeed. Yeah, and sometimes I had to kick your can down the street to do it too. But, <laughs> you know. Yep, yep, that's... <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes around, I mean, there's, there's, we had one employee, we literally, we had to let him go back, and this is way back in the day, like Schrock lore. He was, uh, he was a wunderkind. I mean, the kid was good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he liked to, uh, to drive around in the company vehicle after hours with his girlfriend and, and, you know, partake of the cannabis route. And, uh, and well, you know, when you, when you leave the residue of those kind of activities in the company vehicle, well, Actions have to be taken, and so you know he he went on to go work for AMD. I mean he, oh, wow. yeah, I mean he's a. It, it's amazing. So like I said, I'm not taking credit for these guys. These guys are naturally talented, oh, yeah. or they wouldn't right. be coming in. But um, but boy, if, you know we can hone that and, and improve it and give them the tools oh. they need to succeed. It just I don't know. You know how it goes. You you you're, you're happy oh. for them and you're sad at the same time. You know. I'm very proud of these kids, especially when they compliment you 30 years later. So. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the call, Terry. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, Stephanie. Stephanie is up next, and she's got something she needs to tell me. Stephanie, how can I help you uncompute this today? Well, I just I have two things. Okay. First off, when is your next uh, maintenance check? Well, we do maintenance checkups all the time. Well, Stephanie. I mean, the half price one. When oh, half price. when's it going on special again? Okay. We yeah. usually uh, we usually put them on special. Um, in the spring at some point uh, because you know, during Christmas we're obviously super busy. And then in January, everybody gets their new tech and breaks it or doesn't know how to hook it up. And so you know, January is usually a very busy month for us. And then we get into uh, you know, February is a short month. It's only 28 days. Uh, and then March comes along. And as soon as here's a good guide, as soon as it gets warm enough for people to start putting things in the ground, that's when our, that's when our volume just, tanks. Um, part of it is because it's the, the demographic we serve um, still knows how to plant things. You know, <laughs> we do live in Nebraska, you know, and so, uh, you know, we serve a 35, 40 plus demographic. They put things in the ground. And when that happens, you know, it's kind of like me playing a game of civilization. For any of you out there who have ever played the game civilization, you know, when you sit down at that computer and play that game, time ceases to exist. You look up and it's like six hours have gone by 
and you know you you only eliminated two civilizations and you're like oh this is terrible and you know your wife is looking at you like are you going to take out the trash at some point today or are you just going to play that game all day um and you're like well i guess i'm going to play the game all day of course <laughs> um but no so the uh <laughs> now you had something to say about facebook though too right yes i did all right what, what's I going on with facebook well you always say you know, you've got everything up on Facebook, and you're going to post it on Facebook, and some of us aren't on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So do you post it on your uh, Schrock website? Great question. Sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. Facebook is a good communication tool for short-term things, like, hey, we're going to open late today because it's snowing. Um, you know, you don't really want to post that on the website because it stay when we post on the website, it stays on the website forever. Um, so, for example, uh, last week we had – a debacle rolling out this uh, this meltdown detection tool. And uh, we got it all sorted out. It is posted to the website at schrockinnovations.com under the do-it-yourself section. You can test your computer to see if you're vulnerable to the meltdown inspector vulnerabilities, and then you can find out what you need to do to make your computer safe. Uh, if there is anything you can do to make your computer safe, we're going to talk about that a little bit in the show here today too. Um, so on Facebook, for example, we do the live streaming. Now here's the thing. Our Facebook page is completely wide open. You do not have to be a subscriber to Facebook to see our page. You can go to facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations, and you can see all of our content. You can read the reviews. You can watch the radio show live right now. You don't actually have to have a Facebook account because I do understand, you know, I, I'm not a big Facebook user myself. You know, I, I had a big phase when it first came out like everybody did. Then I backed way off, and then I tried to get involved in it again, and it was like watching Bambi learn how to walk. It was terrible. I mean – my wife was like, Thor, you don't, you don't share things like that on Facebook. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, no, you don't talk about those things on Facebook. I'm like, there's a code? Yes, there's a code. And where's the code written? It's not written. It's an unwritten code, and you just violated it multiple times. You, you no, know, don't do that. And so <laughs> my personal Facebook page is, is just pretty much, you know, Facebook, is, since I post so little, this is how little I post on Facebook. Facebook thinks that my 11-year-old son, Jacob, is me. Because he is always hanging out with my wife and all of her pictures. And Facebook knows that we're married. So the Facebook algorithm has made the calculation that no mother hangs out with their son that much. <laughs> and so as a result, this must be her husband. <laughs> so, yeah, so in the pictures, it says, you know, tag Thor Schrock. But it's all pictures of, of my wife and my son. And so my Facebook is pretty much I get to add them to my timeline because I'm tagged in them when I'm not. It's just like an automatic thing. So it, it's kind of funny, but, uh, but no, so you don't actually have to be a member of Facebook to consume the content we put on Facebook. So when I say something's on Facebook, you can pop over there and take a look at it. And all, as always, if it's something that, you know, you can't find or you have trouble doing, you can go to our website. You can, you know, there's a contact form. You can send an email. Um, every single email that comes through that contact form, I see. I don't always respond to them because they're usually directed toward the service centers or the staff, but I see them so I can kind of keep my, my finger on the heartbeat of what's going on. Um, and if there's ones that, that are best responded to by me, I will respond to all so that they know they don't have to respond to it because I took care of it. Um, so if you want to bounce a message into the service center, you want to get a hold of me, all you have to do is uh, type something in the contact form there, hit submit, comes into the service centers, and then we can get you the information you need if you missed it on Facebook. Okay. Some of us are in the witness protection program, you know. And so. <laughs> all right. Well, for those people, the lovely Kimberly reminds me that every week we take this video and the audio of the radio shows and we post them to schrockinnovations.com. And I have watched that. Yep. So you can watch the radio shows. You can watch the morning blend segments. You can consume all of our media and our informative goodness at schrockinnovations.com. Okay. Well, I was just concerned that stuff was out there that I couldn't get to. So. Nope. You have full access, Stephanie. You have an all access backstage behind the scenes pass. Awesome. <laughs> all right, Stephanie. Thanks for listening to the program. Have a great afternoon. Mm -hmm. All righty, 866-496-8772. Got to take a break. Bottom of the hour. Stay tuned. More of Compute This. And is ransomware going away? Poor Maersk. The Maersk company, they made a movie about them. We're going we're gonna to talk about their experience with ransomware. Coming up next on Compute This. Drive Advisor is a free program from Schrock Innovations that monitors your hard drive's health and tells you if it's going bad. Download it for free at driveadvisor.com. External hard drives are handy. You can back up multiple computers to them or even use them to move lots of data from one computer to another. 
Computer users have been buying the same old external hard drives for years. While our computers have been getting faster, we still do backups that take hours or watch epic progress bars creep by to move files. Schrock wanted more for our customers, so our innovators created the fastest external hard drives on the planet. Schrock modular storage devices are up to 50% faster than Seagate or Western Digital Externals and are modular in the truest sense of the word. We can create whatever size and speed of drive you need for all of your needs. And all modular storage devices come with a data restoration guarantee. If you use our drives for backing up and your computer's hard drive fails, we'll restore your backup to your repaired computer for free. Fast, simple, and flexible technology solutions from Schrock Innovations. It's what we do. Compute this Pro Tip 578. Technology is constantly changing, so how can you tell when the time has come to recycle your old outdated computer and invest in a new one? Experts have rules of thumb and formulas, but Schrock believes the answer is simple. You should replace your old computer when it can no longer do the things you need in a secure way. For example, you should not be using operating systems like Windows XP or Vista because they're no longer maintained by Microsoft and they're not secure. And if your computer cannot run Windows 10, it's probably time to begin saving for a replacement. If your existing computer requires a repair and that cost is 50% or more of the cost of a new computer, it might be time to consider a replacement. But keep in mind, additional costs like data transfers and important software you have to upgrade like genealogy software or Quicken. And also keep in mind that modern computers are engineered to last 18 months for a normal user. And don't worry, you are considered a normal user. Schrock modular PCs and solid state laptops are specifically designed to last four to six years for that same normal user, saving your family money and time. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. President Trump continues to craft his first State of the Union address. The president will talk about jobs and the economy. That includes tax reform, tax cut, deregulation, and possibly college savings. He's also expected to talk about infrastructure, immigration, trade, and national security. Five Democrats are planning to boycott the president's address. Fox's Ellison Barber, the address will be this Tuesday evening. Massachusetts Representative Joe Kennedy will deliver the Democratic response. Plenty of moisture in the air across much of the eastern U.S. this last Sunday in January. The good news is it's wet, not white. If you're down in the southeast today, there are going to be rounds and rounds of heavy showers. That's going to be lingering all the way through your Sunday into your Monday before eventually clearing off on the backside of the system. The weather getting a little bit colder after that. Fox meteorologist Adam Klotz. Fox News, we report, you decide. Now, the News Radio 1110 KFAB Weather Watch. Clouds will be with us through the entire day. By the afternoon, we bring in some light snow showers as well. They should have a minimal impact, but a dusting to a coating is still possible. And of course, that means there could be some slick spots out on the streets. We'll have a high temperature of 30 degrees. Overnight tonight, we'll fall down into the middle teens. With Omaha's most accurate weather team, I'm 6 News Meteorologist Brad Sugden for News Radio 1110 KFAB. <laughs> All righty, guys. Welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. We've got three locations to help you out. If you're local in the Nebraska metro areas, um, we've got uh, the Omaha Service Center, 168th and Burke Street in Omaha. That's Village Point South. In Lincoln, 27th and Pine Lake Road down there in South Lincoln. Also in Papillion, the brand new service center at uh, the corner of 84th and Highway 370. Today, you can find us, though, 866-496-8772. Those are the numbers to give us a call, ask a question, make a comment on the show. We can go ahead and help you out with your problems that you're having there. Also, you can uh, always find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. That's where the show is being broadcast live right now. If you're just joining us on our Facebook Live, if you would, please go ahead and uh, like the broadcast. Uh, like it and please share it. That's super important. Um, it uh, allows others that are your friends and family members to see you're watching it. And uh, as a result, they join the show. We get more listeners and more viewers and people get more help. It works out. All right. So uh, during the break, I mentioned I answer questions in the, uh, the Facebook. And down on the right side there, you'll see a link that just got posted for the semantic endpoint protection uh, portal status. This is the link that I talked about just a few minutes ago because I literally just got a question on Facebook saying, 
hey, I called into the service center because my endpoint wasn't working right and they said it wasn't connecting to the servers right now. Any idea when that might be fixed? That's the link. You click that link, it tells you when it's going to be fixed or what the status of the fix is. So as of right now, update. Um, <laughs> wait a minute, I'm going to refresh this because this, if, if this is what I think it's saying, this is going to be uh, great radio content here. Let me refresh it one more time because apparently they don't work on the weekends. Um, update, we're continuing to monitor the semantic endpoint cloud infrastructure and we'll provide updates as new information is available. The next update will be provided at the end of January 27th, which was yesterday. Um, well, that would be Saturday, so I guess they do work weekends, unless pertinent information becomes available. Um, basically, what they have is their customer portal. That's where you go to view your subscription data. Um, that's where we go to see the status of your computers, things like that. Um, has degraded performance. Uh, dispatching service, if we wanted to send your computer a request to do a virus update and a, uh, and a scan, uh, we can send those requests to your computer to do those under special circumstances. That service is degraded right now. Um, the partner portal where we manage all of our stuff is degraded performance right now. And the agent installation service is degraded performance right now. Um, now, degraded does not mean down. Degraded means degraded. It's not working at, at its maximum capacity. They don't provide us with any reason why that's happening, um, but basically everything is operational. So you'll see that it's degraded but operational. That's why you're getting those question marks and they're hanging around for a while until you get rid of them. 866-496-8772. All right, so ransomware. There's a great article that I found here uh, this week, because a lot of the work that we do at Schrock is security related. Um, I just gave a presentation this week for the Great Plains Conference on securing your, your technology and how you can secure your stuff. We did a live demonstration. Uh, we did a live hack. I shared these cams in the aftershock last week, but uh, uh, we did a live hack where we, we popped into a restaurant in Los Angeles, like a Stella's-like place. Um, it looked like Stella's, it was kind of weird. And uh, you know, so watched some people having you know, lunch in Los Angeles. Uh, we went to uh, a boxing ring in New York, watched some people sparring, and there was some dude just laying on the floor with his legs bent. And it was like, is he out? Do they just leave him on the mat when he goes down? What's going on there? Uh, <laughs> so that was pretty fun. Um, and then we, you know, we took a look at uh, a gentleman's back deck in Missouri because he didn't secure his webcam. And so, you know, it was a good, it was a good little talk. You know, we had a, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, and one of the things that I specifically warned about in business is ransomware. Ransomware is a type of infection that when it hits your computer, it usually comes in through either an email with a link that you click on. Um, oh, watch out, guys. I am seeing, I've seen multiple links um, of, uh, they're, they're garbage links saying that my W-2 is ready and to click here to get it. Now, everybody this time of year wants to file their taxes and they're all waiting for their W-2 so they can telefile or do whatever. Um, if you get an email saying click here to get your W-2, it's probably not real, okay? Unless you're expecting a W-2 via email, even then be careful, but don't click the link. It's, it's an infection. What happens is you click that link and it takes you to an infection website where then if you have outdated third-party software like Flash or Java or anything like that, boom, it knocks your computer down. So here we have ransomware. This article says, Ransomware is time running out for the biggest menace on the web. This is via ZDNet. Attempts at delivering ransomware have declined as cyber criminals move toward other forms of malware, at least for now. All right. So basically what they're saying here is people are getting wise to ransomware. They're getting products like Secure Updater that keep their third-party software up to date, secureupdater.com. You can get a free 15-day uh, trial there if you don't have one. Um, and if you were at the Great Plains Conference, you got a coupon code for a free year. Yeah, I won't get that out on the air, though. That, they had to be at the conference for that one. But if you go to secureupdater.com, you can get yourself a free 15-day subscription. I posted a link here on Facebook for you um, that you can click on, and it'll check your software and make sure you're up to date. This is going to be important if you want to watch the Super Bowl as well. We're going to talk about that coming up in the next segment here. Um, but basically, ransomware is being supplanted by cyber criminals installing mining software on your computer. They want to infect your computer and drop a Trojan on there that mines cryptocurrency. Semantic Endpoint will detect those miners every time, without fail, every version, and remove them for you. So if you have Semantic Endpoint, you don't have to worry about the next biggest threat because Semantic Endpoint's already taking care of it for you, even if you have a question mark. <laughs> it's taking care of it for you. But then, right next to this story, no joke, like three stories down on the list. Ransomware forced Maersk. Now, you remember Maersk, right? They made the movie about the, the Maersk, Alabama, the, the cargo container ship that was hijacked by Somali pirates. Uh, I'm the boss now. 
Yeah, that one. The I, the boss now movie. Well, this ransomware forced Maersk to reinstall 4,000 servers and 4,500 PCs. There is a quote on here. I'm going to see if I can find it because this, this tells the story. Quote, imagine a company where a ship with 10 to 20,000 containers is entering a port every 15 minutes. And for 10 days, you have no IT. It's almost impossible to even imagine, unquote. So what happened is they got hit with ransomware and it wormed its way through their network. It encrypted all their computers. They wanted a, probably an epic ransom if they, if they took millions in downtime rather than, uh, than uh, paying the ransom. Um, in September, FedEx revealed the damage that was caused by a falling victim to a cyber attack. The delivery giant uh, lost about $300 million after operations of the TNT Express unit in Europe were disrupted. Um, so this is real, real stuff, especially if you own a business, this is real stuff. And this is what I talked about at that conference. Like even if you're a small business owner, imagine losing your IT for a week that with the entire UK healthcare system was taken offline last year. Remember that? Well, so ransomware is not going away, but they have a problem. You see, they usually demand their ransom in Bitcoin, right? And it's usually like 0.2 Bitcoin, which was great when Bitcoin was like 600 bucks because you know. Half of Bitcoin is 300, so 0.25 Bitcoin's 150 bucks. They figure most people will pay 150 bucks to get their baby pictures back. Most people will. So great, people paid the ransom. But when Bitcoin goes to $10,000, 0.2 Bitcoin, two, two grand, how, how much do I love the children again? <laughs> you know, do I really want to remember all those things I posted on Facebook that weren't supposed to. If you would have just let me post those pictures on Facebook of the poop explosion, then you don't, you don't post poop pictures to Facebook. That was one of my lessons. That's the unwritten code. Even if you're a parent and every parent on earth will say, oh, no, I've been there. That's terrible. Yeah, you just you can't post that. You're not supposed to. So, yeah, guys, dads. Learn the lesson, right? There are new dads out there listening. Got to learn that lesson. Um, but yeah, if you would just let me post those pictures, the ransomware attack, I wouldn't have to pay this guy two grand to get my pictures back. Um, what a pile of poo. But anyway, so basically when you see an article that says ransomware, time is running out. If they stop doing ransomware, it's because they've moved on to another threat, uh, something that's more profitable. And as soon as that new thing becomes less profitable, they'll go right back to ransomware. So make sure your computer is protected. Run Secure Updater. Secure Updater is available a free 15-day trial at secureupdater.com. You, you don't have to put a credit card in or anything like that. You can just go and get the free trial. It will ask you to subscribe after the fact. By the way, we have a brand new version of Secure Updater rolling out next week. I'm testing it right now on my computer. It's working great. Um, it, we're going to have a lot to talk about next week. Maybe I'll do a Facebook Live where I introduce it next week. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but, uh, but nevertheless... That's coming out next week. It's a great program, so go ahead and check it out. It'll keep your computer safe. Um, and besides that, you need the latest version of Flash if you're going to watch the Super Bowl. That's something we're going to talk about in the next segment. Coming up next, Frank, stay on the line. Your call and the Super Bowl on your PC. Oh, I said Super Bowl. Oh, my gosh, we're going to get sued. Uh, no, I, no, is it worse if I call it the Stupid Bowl? No, no. Oh, golly. Oh, yeah, well, I better get, I, I got to go. <laughs> More coming up later. Somebody else. Bye-bye. Schrock Innovations Data Recovery Lab saves the data the other guys can't. The next time your hard drive, camera card, or flash drive fails, let Schrock get your data back. Schrock Innovations has spent nearly two decades working to make your technology life easier. And the all-new SchrockInnovations.com is no exception. Now you can order new modular computers and solid-state laptops directly from our website. Secure your computer with our virus-free guaranteed semantic endpoint software. Find innovative new technologies like our modular storage devices and get free help and tips. Take a look at the special section to find sales on one-of-a-kind items, display models, refurbished units, and our latest special offers. Swing by the Compute This page to watch TV segments and archived radio shows, or even get one-on-one -on -one help through the Schrock Desk. As always, we respect your privacy, so we secure our website with the latest encryption technology and only the most secure payment methods. You can pick up your purchases at any of our three service centers or have them shipped directly to your door. The new Shrockinnovations.com makes technology simple. It's what we do. 
Shimpute This Pro Tip 178. Those little life-saving surge protector strips are vital to your computer's health and should be used whenever possible, even for laptops. As computers get smaller and more powerful, they're also becoming more sensitive to dirty power, and your power is a lot dirtier than you might think. Even if you have a whole home surge protection, most power surges are generated within your own home. If you've ever vacuumed and seen the lights get dimmer and brighter, you created a surge. Surge protectors can only absorb so much energy measured in joules. When that capacity is exhausted, your surge protector becomes a glorified extension cord and needs to be replaced. You should always look for surge protectors that give audible alerts when they're no longer able to protect your equipment. Schrock recommends these because the lights on most strips are just power lights and they don't tell you when it's time to replace the unit. If in doubt, replace your surge protectors annually to keep your expensive TVs, computers, and other electronic equipment safe. This pro tip is brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. All righty, guys, welcome back in. Final segment of Compute This. So, Gary Poster in the break. Hey, your, your video looks great today. Audio levels are awesome. And so we've identified it's OBS Studio that's causing the problem. If you had any idea how much garbage I bought, I have new cables. I had the engineers come into the studio and give me a direct feed line in case it was the Wi-Fi that was screwing up. All this stuff. But the problem is I can't do my little overlay on the bottom anymore that says call to win. And the little Schrock Innovations logo, all the brandy brandy stuff. So, so this is my Cuba style right here. You see the storm coming, tracking across the map this way and this way. <laughs> if you've ever seen a Cuban weather report, you know what I'm talking about. 866-496-8772. A few minutes left in the program. I might be able to get your call in here, but let's jump to those phones and take Frank's call. Frank, how can I help you uncompute this? Yeah, Thor, I got the new gig service here in Lincoln. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, you know, uh, but all my uh, laptops I have and I, uh, are non-AC uh, Wi-Fi. Right. So, of course, we're not getting the speed that we're wanting. And so I was wondering how uh, how hard is it for you guys to change those uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, adapters? Yeah, great question. All the Wi-Fi adapters and laptops and, and all-in-ones, for that matter, are removable for the most part. So we can remove them and replace them with other units. Um, so there's that. That's one way to do it. The other way is, honestly, you can get a USB add-on. They make the nubs so small now. They're almost like those little mouse transceivers that you can plug right into right. a USB port if you, if you don't mind having something sticking out of the side of the computer. But if you want the internal chip changed, that's absolutely something we can do. The chipsets are going to cost, for, for the wireless AC ones, they're more expensive. Um, so like the wireless N ones would be like 60 to 80 bucks, but the wireless ACs are about $150 a piece. Uh, and there'd be an hour of labor for us to, to put it in, install the drivers and get it all up and running for you. All right. Well, good. Good. All right. We'll look into that. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks for the call, Frank. I appreciate it. I appreciate you calling 866-496-8772. Call to win. If you're on Facebook, you know why I'm saying it that way. If you're not on Facebook, like Stephanie, you know, I'm holding up a piece of paper, Stephanie. And this piece of paper says 866-496-8772, call to win, with an exclamation point. But the dot isn't a dot because you can't see the dot in the camera. It's a circle. See? It's a circle. All right. So, <laughs> Super Bowl. If you're going to watch the Super Bowl, there is only one place that you can watch the Super Bowl in stunning 4K high definition, and that's on NBC. That's right. If you want to watch it, the best video quality is going to be on your TV. But some of us, for example, aren't going to be around a TV. Maybe you have to work. So how can you work while you watch the Super Bowl? Well, you can go to NBCSports.com and you can watch the game live. Now, it's a stream, right? My son the other day was watching a football game on Amazon. And literally, I could see it jerking. Just, I mean, it was just a little bit. But he was so excited to be watching a football game on Amazon that it was one of those things where his brain convinced him that it, the video was just as good as TV. When you could look at the demonstrable evidence and see that it wasn't as good, but he insisted multiple times that it was. So it, it, it's going to be a stream. You're not going to see every heartbeat of action, but you'll be able to watch the game, NBCSports.com, provided that you have an up-to-date copy of Adobe's Flash Player installed on your computer. Now, the interesting thing is, 
Uh, supported operating systems are all Windows. Linux is not listed as a supported operating system. Uh, the guy writing the article said that uh, his experience has been you can watch NBCSports.com on Linux using Google Chrome, but they say you have to have Flash, and the Flash doesn't work with Chrome anymore. They got rid of it. Um, so if you do have issues watching NBC Sports with Google Chrome, you may not have issues. You may not, but if you do, try a different browser like Mozilla Firefox and make sure you have the latest version of the Flash player installed. Now, what is the absolute easiest way to make sure you have the latest copy of the Flash player installed? If only there was a program that automatically and silently updated your third-party programs with ease. If only there was a place you could go to get a 15-day free trial of such a program. Wouldn't that be amazing? If only. All right. SecureUpdater.com, folks. For those of you who weren't here for the previous part of the show, it's SecureUpdater.com, okay? Uh, speaking of free stuff, another freebie that we've got, uh, Drive Advisor. Drive Advisor is an absolutely free program. There, is no, there are no ads. There's no, no garbledygook. It is a free program that you can install on your computer from Drive Advisor, E-R, because we're American. DriveAdvisor.com, open for business and stuff. But you can install Drive Advisor on your computer, and what it does is it monitors the health of your hard drive. My data recovery lab, literally, I'm out of bins. And I bought more bins like three months ago. I am out of bins because that's how many active data recovery jobs we have in our lab right now. We have so many active data recovery jobs in our lab right now. If you're watching on Facebook and you're a data recovery engineer, uh, let's see, hashtag data recovery. Recovery. See, I don't know Facebook very well. My wife will probably tell me that's not the right way to do that. But uh, now they'll see it. If you're a data recovery engineer, <laughs> we're hiring. We're paying a ridiculous amount of money to find somebody in the Omaha metro area. Uh, you can see our ad up on Indeed for that. We'll relocate people. Um, it's pretty crazy. We had a few people apply for the position. No, not real good fits. But I'm out of bins because that many people's hard drives are failing and their data is in peril because of it. So do not let this happen to you. If you install Drive Advisor on your computer, it, you'll do it one time. And what Drive Advisor does, it runs quietly in the background. It doesn't take up a lot of resources or slow your computer down. And what it does is it asks you for your email address when you first install it. Give it a real email address because it's going to email you when your hard drive goes bad. So if you give it a fake email address, <laughs> joke's on you. It doesn't validate the email address. It doesn't send you an email and make you click the link or any garbage because we don't use the email for communication purposes at all. There's no opt-in, so therefore there's no email. So bottom line, install Drive Advisor, and if you put your email address in, it will tell you when your hard drive goes bad. If your email address has changed since you installed Drive Advisor, you can click on the Drive Advisor. Uh, you open up the program and it says re enter email right at the top. Click on that. You can type in your new email address. We actually have companies. Um, my, my staff revealed to me we have three companies, or maybe they're not companies. We have three individuals that have 40 or more computers on a single Drive Advisor email. Sure sounds like a network administrator to me. 866-496-8772. Kathy, how can I help you today on Compute This? Oh, I'm having a problem. My computer started locking up and going black. Okay. When it goes black, when it locks up and goes black, does it do both all the time, or does it sometimes lock up and sometimes go black? Uh, no, it locks up and then it goes black. Okay. Um, what kind of computer is it? Is it a laptop or desktop or an all-in-one? It's a desktop. Okay. So there's a couple possibilities here. The computer locking up. Um, so you're saying when it locks up, it goes black immediately, like all the time. Mm, it's, it's yeah. An, so it, it stops responding and blacks out. Yes. Do the lights on the front of the tower stay on? Yes. Okay. So the power light stays on and the fans keep running? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, couple things. The reason I'm asking the questions like this, number one, screens going out, a lot of people are getting to that point where, you know, the flat panel monitors got really popular in the early 2000s. So some people still have their original flat panel monitors and they, they do die. And so <laughs> they're starting to die. And people are like, my, my computer's locking up and they bring it into the shop and we're like, it's fine. And they're like, no, I took it home. It locked up again. It's because their monitor was dying. That's why I wanted to make sure it wasn't happening separately. Most of the time, Kathy, when your computer is locking up like that, especially if the video stops working, 
you have a thermal issue related to the video chipset in the in the computer. So some desktop computers have dedicated graphics cards, and those cards have fans on them. If that fan stops turning, you won't even hear it inside the computer. You won't hear the difference of that one little fan. But if it stops turning, the video can overheat. That can lock up the entire computer and cause your screen to go black at the same time. Have you ever been into one of our service centers before, Kathy? I went in once. Okay, perfect. So which one do you go to normally? Uh, the one in Papillion. Okay, perfect. perfect. If you Now, we moved that one, so we're on 84th and Highway 370 now. Um, but if you okay, want to stop in... Yeah, well, we're a little closer. If you want to stop in with the computer, it sounds like it's a thermal issue. What I would suggest we start with is a preventative maintenance checkup. The preventative maintenance checkup is one of the things we're doing. We're going to blow it out and check all the fans and everything. I think that would probably solve the problem for you if we can get that fan turning again. And if not, we can always replace the fans, and they're not terribly expensive to replace. Oh, good. (laughs) <laughs> All right, Kathy, thank you for the call. I appreciate you joining us on the show. I got to run here. Uh, today's winner, $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate is Stephanie. Stephanie, who does not have Facebook. Well, guess what? I'll send you a Facebook message. At, no, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll call you, Stephanie, and get your address. Christine will give you a buzz and get that out to you here on Monday. Uh, don't miss us on the Omaha Morning Blend tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the... Uh, uh, Oh, golly, the Spectre and Meltdown thing and the patch detection tool and all that stuff. 940 KMTV Channel 3. If you're not in Omaha, we'll post it on Facebook. And we'll see you again next Sunday for another edition of Compute This. Nebraska's news, weather, and traffic station. This is News Radio 1110 KFAB Omaha. And I Heart Radio Station. On demand at KFAB.com.